the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, that wonderful salad and cooking oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. The new and better way to pop corn is to pop it in Kraft oil. And to urge you to try it soon, the Kraft folks will give you a free package of Jolly Time popcorn when you buy a bottle of Kraft oil at your grocer's. The gift package is wrapped around each bottle of Kraft oil, and it will make three quarts of extra fluffy, delicious popcorn. Get your free package of Jolly Time Popcorn tomorrow when you buy Kraft Oil. Well, there's one thing I found out. A bachelor trying to raise a family is a busy man, even with a good housekeeper like Brady. Mr. Gilsley spends all day up to his neck at the water department, and when he gets home, he's over his head trying to keep up with Leroy. Is Bertie who tracked mud in the house? Is that mud back in here again? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Bertie didn't do it, and it wasn't you, was it? No. And it wasn't that vacuum cleaner salesman that came by here today, because all he got was one foot in the door. Well, I shouldn't have asked a silly question. Because the tracks lead right to the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, sir, so you know how it is with Leroy when he comes home from school. He makes tracks right for the refrigerator. Yes, yes. Hey, where's the evening paper, Bertie? I think it's on the coffee table under all them books. Oh, my goodness. Who dumped the public library on my coffee table? Oh, them books belong to Dad. Leroy brought them home with him. Yeah, that boy has enough trouble with his own books without taking on somebody else's. Oh, they're going to do homework together. Good. I hope some of Bab's brilliance rubs off on Leroy. Yes. Come on in, Bab. Wipe your feet first, Leroy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Look, I'm wiping my feet like you said. Yes, yes. Hello, Bab. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Will we bother you if we do our homework over here, Unc? No, not at all. Use my study if you like. Gee, thanks. Come on, Bab. Aren't we going to take our book? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he really has his mind on homework. <laughs> Leroy, how'd you do on that algebra test today? Yeah, who knows? Algebra's for the birds. Yeah, I didn't like algebra either. But that's not the right attitude for the boy to have. Well, let's start on something else. Let's learn our history. Okay. I better concentrate on my newspaper. Don't want to eavesdrop. Hey, I want to ask you something, Bab. What? Did Herbie Anderson ask you to go to the movie Saturday? Herbie would ask me every Saturday if I didn't discourage him. Well, I'm glad you do, Bab. What does this have to do with history? <laughs> anyway, why should I go to a movie with Herbie? I'd much rather go with somebody who pays my way. <laughs> What would you do if I wasn't right there to take you every Saturday? Would you go with Herbie? Come on, let's study history. Yeah, he'd find out if he wasn't there some Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> the heck with history. Would you go with him? Would you? <laughs> Leroy, you look so panicky. Well, guy asks a question, he expects an answer. Would you go with Herbie? This is homework? <laughs> Carta. The what? E -e -e. The only date he's interested in is the matinee. Leroy. Oh, this 
afternoon, they're doing homework over the dad's house. Oh? He sure is cute the way they study together. Yeah, I'm afraid most of Leroy's study is confined to girls. I hope it doesn't reflect in his schoolwork. Oh, no, sir. He don't seem to be worried about how he's doing at school. Oh? He brought his report card home today, and he wasn't even trembling. Where is his report card? It's it. Well, let's see what it says. Attitude, B minus. Courtesy, B plus. Going up. English, B minus. History, C. Going down. <laughs> Algebra, D minus? It's about. <laughs> This is the worst report card he's ever brought home. Leroy. Oh, hi, Unc. I want to talk to you. Yeah? I've been overstudying. I got the word. I also got your report card. Well, bet, Bert, better go see what's about doing in the kitchen. Leroy. Did you hear me? I said I got your report card. Yeah, I brought it home. Aren't you a little concerned? I wasn't until I saw I passed everything. <laughs> but your grades are going down. Next semester, they may go up. Oh, my goodness. I'm very disappointed in your showing this semester. Now, hike up to your room and study until you're called for dinner. I've been studying, Unc. My brain's worn out. Well, hit the books, young man, or something else may get worn out. Okay. Gosh, you think I'd flunk. <laughs> Uh, well, that's what we want to guard against. Uh, excuse me, Miss Gill, please. Yes, Bertie. What time do you want dinner? You well, know, there's no hurry this evening. I want to give Leroy time to absorb a little learning. Yes. All right, George, I'll nip this attitude in the butt. You have to be an alert parent these days, Bertie. Yes. It's a good thing I know how to cope with these things. Yes. Yeah, I think I'll phone Grace. Yes, teacher. You're going to see her Friday night. Yes, but I want to check with her now. I wonder if she's on the ball at school the way I am at home. Gosh, Babs, I hope you're not going with Herbie. Oh, my goodness. Leroy's on the extension upstairs. She is. Is somebody on your line, Leroy? Is that you, Unc? Leroy. We're studying. <laughs> Young man, get off the phone. Goodbye. Studying. Yeah, I'm not going to call this teacher. I'm going by school tomorrow and see what's going on. Oh, Leroy might have been studying. Maybe you caught him on the phone doing a reset. <laughs> now, Bertie, don't try to defend him. They weren't studying, and you know it. All they talk about is movies, dances, dates. Well, maybe he's concentrating on the social sciences. <laughs> Oh, no, Bertie. <laughs> yes, sir. He may have a D minus in algebra, but he's A plus in the social sciences. All right, Bertie. Leroy may be C in history and D in algebra, but he's A plus in the social sciences. Bertie, please. Mr. Gill, please, you know what Leroy's A plus in? Yes, Bertie. That's right. He's A plus in the social sciences. <laughs> like they're between classes. I could talk this over with Grace on one of our dates, but Leroy's attitude demands action. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. I was just on my way to your classroom. Well, if you want to be admitted to my class, let me see your junior high credit. <laughs> this is about Leroy. Oh? Oh, there's the bell. I can't talk now. You, well, do you mind if I slip in the back of the room and observe? Not at all. Why don't you go through that door? Oh, thank you, Grace. See you later. I have to hurry. Right, George, there's something about a school teacher in high heels. <laughs> yeah, oh, but I came here to observe Leroy. And yeah, there's Leroy. He doesn't see me. I wonder why they always make him sit up front. Oh, here comes Grace. Kids will settle down now. Here, there's Bab sitting right across from Leroy. That's a big help. 
today we're to have our little oral quiz about the uh, atom, a subject we're just beginning to understand. Yeah, I'm glad I came. You know, the Earth is composed of many elements, oxygen, gold, copper, carbon, and so on. Now, each of these elements is built of tiny particles called atoms. Oop, Leroy isn't listening. He just passed a note to Bats. What is the meaning of the Greek word atom? I see a number of hands showing, but I'd like to ask uh, Leroy. Me? <laughs> she saw him pass the note. Would you like to answer the question, Leroy? Well, uh, would, would you like to ask it again, Miss Tuttle? I yes. asked it once, Leroy. Well, would, would you mind rephrasing it? <laughs> Bad boy. I'm sorry, Leroy. Pay attention while we hear from Susan. Yes, Susan? The atom was named after the Greek word which means uncuttable. That's correct. But recently they found ways to split the atom with a machine called a cyclotron. Thank you, Susan. A cyclotron is a machine uh, Susan, that... Susan, dear, <laughs> let somebody else answer the question. Yes, Miss Huddle. <laughs> Leroy should spend more time with Susan. <laughs> You can tell us what a cyclotron is. Well, <laughs> would you mind rephrasing the question? <laughs> yes, I would. Oh, brother. Bad, what is a cyclotron? A cyclotron is a machine for splitting the atom. Well, that's brief, but true. Now that we've split the atom, what are its three chief components? Leroy? I don't know. <laughs> well, at least he's honest. <laughs> Susan? They're the proton, the neutron, and the electron. That is correct. Any questions, class? Yes. How do I get out of here? <laughs> How embarrassing for a former member of the school board. Yeah, I think I'll go into Peavy's and ask for an atomic aspirin. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? No, I won't order yet. I'm waiting for Grace Tuttle. You don't care. <laughs> She's meeting me here after school. My, my, can't you wait till the sun goes down to do your courting? Well, I... I want to talk to her about Leroy. He isn't getting much out of school. Well, Leroy always struck me as being a pretty intelligent boy. I sat in his class today. He doesn't even know what's in an atom. He doesn't? And that's the smallest thing there is in the world. Yes, but it's a big question. Uh, what is in an atom, Mr. Gildersleeve? What's in it? Hmm. Well, it... it, it... What did that little girl say was in it? <laughs> That's what it said. <laughs> well, they didn't teach me that when I went to school. No, yeah, me either. The big scientific discovery in my day was the automobile. Well, hello, Gay. Hello, Scott Morton, Mr. Peavy. Good afternoon, Miss Tuttle. Would you like something from the fountain? I think I'd like a lemonade. Good. I want a big cherry Coke, Peavy, and heavy on the cherry. Very well, but only one of those to a customer. <laughs> I'm glad you called back, Rock Morton. I uh, wondered why you slipped out of the classroom. Oh, you knew why. <laughs> Leroy's really a dear. Well, I hate to have to tell you that I'm a little disappointed with his progress in school. Well, I'm afraid Leroy's developing outside interests. Yeah, since he discovered girls, he can't concentrate on anything else. What are we going to do about it? We? Well, you're his teacher, aren't you? Well, yes, but I'm hardly in a position to squelch every case of puppy love. I have my hands full in class without being a counselor for Cupid. Excuse me. Lemonade for Miss Tuttle and a cherry coke heavy on the cherry for the water commission. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peavy. Now, getting back to Leroy. Oh, Trot Morton, I wouldn't worry about Leroy. We teachers see this happen all the time. It's, well, it's just part of growing up. That's not a very good answer. Oh? He's neglecting his studies for a girl. What if I neglected my water job for a girl? Where would I be? You'd be in hot water. <laughs> well, I can 
can understand how you might become so enamored of a girl you'd let things slide at your office. Me? It could happen to any man if a girl put her mind to it. Oh, come now, Grace. You and I have dates, but I don't let you interfere with my work. I'm just a side issue? Well, I put first things first. Well. I'm a businessman. I'd never let you turn my head. Oh, you wouldn't. Yeah, I'm not that gullible, am I, Petey? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. If your idea of a cozy winter evening is sitting around, listening to the radio, and nibbling on popcorn that's crisp and warm from your own kitchen, then the special offer the craft folks are now making is sure to appeal to you. Kraft wants to show you the easy, delicious way to fix your own popcorn. That's why, for a short time, you can get a package of Jolly Time popcorn absolutely free when you buy a bottle of Kraft oil at your grocer's. All you supply is the kitchen. The package of Jolly Time popcorn, enough to make three quarts, is wrapped around the neck of the Kraft oil bottle. Just pour a little Kraft oil into your skillet or popper, empty in the corn... And before you know it, the family will be feasting on the best eating popcorn in the world. Popping corn in craft oil is as simple as that. There's never a worry about smoking or scorching. Get a bottle of craft oil tomorrow and prove it with your gift package of Jolly Time Popcorn, a make it favorite kind. At the same time you pick up your popcorn, you can also get a separate certificate that's worth three dollars toward the purchase of a whirlwind electric corn popper. You'll find these certificates wherever you see a craft oil display. Remember, both the popcorn and the certificate are absolutely free when you buy that wonderful salad and cooking oil, craft oil. A druggist gets to know quite a lot about it. Customers, and personally, I think one of Mr. Gildersleeve's troubles is that he worries too much about Leroy and his teacher when he should be worrying about himself and the teacher. I could tell by the way her eyes sparked yesterday that she was going to teach somebody a lesson. No, excuse me, customer. Hello, Petey. Don't it worry, customer. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I-, I was just thinking about you and Miss Tuttle. Oh? How are you two lovebirds making out since you were in here the other day? Well, I haven't seen her, Peavy. The mayor's had me pretty busy at the office. Probably a good thing, too, since Grace seemed to think she could twist me around her little finger. I bet she tried. You stuck your neck out so far you could hang the wash on it. <laughs> All I said to Grace was that she couldn't hypnotize me. Well, I wouldn't bank on that. We men have our weak spots. Oh, nonsense, Phoebe. They're the weak sex. <laughs> you dreamer. <laughs> What's that? I used to say the same thing until Mrs. Phoebe mesmerized me. But you married her, Phoebe. That's what I say. <laughs> when a woman decides she wants a man to jump through the hoops, there's only one answer he can give. What's that? Wolf, wolf. <laughs> Tuttle talk, one would think I'm as vulnerable to girls as Leroy. Well, I still say a woman can't turn my head. I've been around. I know all their tricks. Evening, Miss Gillespie. Hello, Bertie. Miss Grace Tuttle phoned a little while ago. She did? Oh, we have a date tonight. Yes, I got that impression. She said to tell you, instead of coming at 8 o'clock, to please come early for dinner. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Is she a good cook? Oh, she's an all right cook, but I don't know about going over there for dinner. You mean you're going to pass up all that candlelight and soft dinner music and a good-looking blonde? Well... And a demitasse and a tater tate? <laughs> now I know I'm not going. Come again? It's a trap, Bertie. I'm going to phone her and make some excuse. I'll just tell her I have some dull work to do. Like income tax. 
<laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Grace, this is Throckmorton. Hey, Bertie said you phoned. Oh, yes, Throckmorton. Are you coming to dinner? Well, I'd love to. Best in the world. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to work on my income tax tonight. Your income tax? Yeah, you know how it is. But your income tax isn't due until March 15th. True, but these tax forms puzzle me. It's going to be a long, dull evening. Of course, I'd much rather spend it with you. Won't be any fun sitting here alone juggling figures. <laughs> Throckmorton, you sound so helpless. Well, I am. That's why it's going to take me a good six weeks to get out my income tax. You amuse me. You're just laying on my sympathy. I'm what? Just because I teach algebra, you're trying to get me over there to do your income tax. You no, know, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't say it, but I know exactly what you mean. I'll come. Yeah, but... We can have dinner at my house another night. Yeah, well, that's very nice of you, Grace, but... Not at all. I'll be glad to help. Bye, Throckmorton. <laughs> Uh, why is Miss Tuttle coming over tonight to check up on me? She's coming to help me with my income tax. Cheap date, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not costing you any money, and you hope she saves you some. Leroy, this was her idea. Yeah? Say, this is a fine chance for me to get in good with her again. Ah, I did it! I got it, Bertie! Yeah, I'd better go. It's Miss Tuttle. Oh, for corn's sake. Good evening, Doc Morton. You come in, Grace. Good evening, Miss Tuttle. May I take your wrap? Thank you, Leroy. Yeah, I'll take it, my boy. Then I'll hang it in the closet. I was about to get busy on my homework, Miss Tuttle, but I thought I'd take the time to say hello to you. <laughs> my, Leroy has more ways of presenting his teacher with apples. <laughs> <laughs> you better start giving his teacher some answers in class. Good night, my boy. Good night, Unc. Good night, Miss Tuttle. I have to go upstairs and study now. Yes, yes. Good night, Leroy. If you'd, uh... I'd like to come into my study, Grace. I uh, have all the figures and records on my desk. All right. My, what a cute study. It looks so lived in. You know, I spend a lot of time in here. You sit down, Grace. There's <clears throat> something so cozy and intimate about this room with its scent of tobacco and the masculine touches here and there. Oh, the atmosphere is too relaxing for work. Yeah, but we better get on with the income tax. <laughs> And you're just determined not to let anything interfere with business. You bet. Stand firm, Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, let's see what we have here. Well, do we start with the income or the outgo? Uh, the simple way is to follow the form you filled out last year. Oh, well, that's up in the attic someplace. Oh? And our attic is a real curio shop, full of old trunks, books, family heirlooms, antiques. Do you have some antiques? Sure. An old gramophone. First in the county. And my great-grandmother's spinning wheel and Uncle Lute's mustache cup. I'd love to see the spinning wheel. Yeah, let's go. No harm in taking a girl up to see an old spinning wheel. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is a fascinating attic. And Bertie keeps everything as neat as a pin. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape for a place so full of packing cases and things. I think the spinning wheel is priceless. Yeah. Well, that income tax form must be here someplace. Rock Morton, is this a picture of you? Well, that's when I was in college. My, how you've changed. Oh? Oh, you're so much more handsome and distinguished looking now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she wouldn't say nice things to me. Here, will you take my hand and help me over this stack of books? Well, uh, easy does it. Oh, I... I, I, I... You aren't hurt, are you? No, but I, I do believe I turned my ankle a bit. Oh? That's the oldest trick women ever tried. <laughs> will you help me up, Rock Morton? Oh, yes, indeed. 
Thank you. Now, if you just walk around on it, it'll be all right in a jiffy. I'll try. Oh, oh. Oh. Say, you did hurt your ankle. Well, why do you think I'm sitting here in the middle of the floor, you big lug? <laughs> well, I didn't realize it was really paining you. I'm sorry, Grace. Here. Let me pick you up. No, 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 no. Just give me your arm. No, Grace, you keep your weight off that ankle. Let me carry you downstairs. Well, you insist. Up, see Daisy. I'm not too heavy, am I? No, light as a feather. And soft as silk. Your hair is tickling my nose. These stairs were twice as long. <laughs> if you'll uh, put me down, I think I can make it now, Throckmorton, if I hold on to the banister. You know, Cherie, you can't take a chance. I'll carry you right down to the parlor. That you, Uncle? What is it, Leroy? Oh, excuse me. I, just, I thought you were doing your income tax. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, Miss Tuttle turned her ankle. Oh, it's all right now, Leroy. You can put me down, Throckmorton. You better put her down, Unc. Your face is flushed. <laughs> Blood's rushing to your head. No, no, i better carry her on downstairs. Well, when you do decide to put her down, you better call the mayor. Or the mayor phone? Yeah, while I was studying. He wants you to come right down to a commissioner's meeting tonight. You know, the mayor can just wait. Yeah? The Throckmorton, you should go. It's business, remember? You're right, George. I'm not going to let business interfere with taking care of you, Grace. Oh? Here we go. You want me to help you carry Miss Tuttle down, Unc? Uh, Leroy, I don't want to take you away from your work. What a character. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Don't forget about Kraft Oil's sensational popcorn offer now being featured at your grocer's. You can get a free package of Jolly Time popcorn with every bottle of Kraft Oil you buy. The Kraft folks make this offer to prove to you that the most wonderful way to popcorn is with Kraft Oil. Next time you're shopping, be sure to get your three-ounce package of Jolly Time popcorn. It's free when you buy a bottle of Kraft Oil. This is Gildersleeve again, friends. As you undoubtedly know, Radio Free Europe is conducting a crusade against communism. This crusade for freedom is a citizen-sponsored organization which daily breaks through the Iron Curtain to bring hope to the enslaved people of the world. This year, the crusade has set a goal of $10 million to be raised by February 22nd to help the voice of truth carry on and grow. I'd like to urge every American who can to join the crusade by contributing his truth dollar. Give it to your local drive or mail it to Crusade for Freedom in care of your local postmaster. See you next week. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Barbara Whiting, Carolyn Watsworth, Lillian Randolph, Mary Schiff, and Dick McGrath. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. <laughs> Now, 
play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC radio network. <laughs> 